Okay, so um, Assalamualaikum, good afternoon. Um, we still have about 25% of you missing, uh, but that's fine. What we're going to do today is, um, let me see, can you guys actually hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yes, doctor. Okay. Yes, doctor. Cool, thank you. I don't have my indicator today. Um, so what we're going to do today is basically um, moving forward on, on catalytic activity and um, what we're going to look at is enzyme kinetics. Okay, just a little bit on um, how we can actually uh, know the kinetics of an enzyme. Okay. All right, so um, enzyme kinetics, um, enzyme catalyst reaction, everybody knows. Um, it's there are a few critical assumptions that need to be considered. So when you are doing an enzyme um, reaction, we normally can't really um, determine or well at least before this we, we can't really determine what is the rate of the reaction at that particular point. Okay, well, at, at any particular point um, because enzymes are very very quick um, in doing what it is supposed to do. So uh, it's very difficult for anyone to actually um, determine the rate of the To, to determine the rate of reaction of an enzyme, okay? So um, why do you want to determine the rate of reaction? So say, for example, if you normally... Is anyone coming in? Okay, Nisha is in. Okay, so, so normally when you have um, a reaction, you normally do it like that, right? So you have probably the substrate concentration over here, and then you have the rate of reaction. So this is what you normally expect. Um, to see for any catalytic reaction, especially if it's a metal catalytic reaction, you normally like to do, uh, you, you normally will get this kind of graph. However, for enzyme kinetics, okay, so you normally don't get a straight line, but towards the other day, you're going to get a plateau grind, uh, a line. So uh, by which initially it will start very, very quick, okay, and at one point, the enzyme will get saturated and the rate of reaction is maintained. Okay, so there's there's no change of rate. Um, so if say for example a long time ago you have an enzyme you want to do a reaction, um, because the the initial rate of reaction at, at the very beginning is very very quick, very very uh, steep. The rate is very steep, so it's very hard for you to actually determine what is the um, actual rate of reaction. Okay, because as you go higher. Why does the graph go spare too? Because um, towards the end of the day, as the reaction goes, your substrate concentration will get slower, uh, gets lower, not slower, will get lower. And then um, you are um, having a, a maximized number of ENS complex. Okay, so there are a few theories by which people can um, use, or even if you are interested, about enzyme kinetics, you can actually find a few theories. But the theory that we're going to look at today is just Michaelis Menten. Um, this is a, an enzyme um, kinetics theory. Of course, uh, it was devised, uh, derived a long, long time ago. And there are assumptions when um, scientists try to um, analyze or try to generalize enzyme kinetics. Okay, so these are the four main assumptions. The first one, um, as we have, um, um, sorry everyone, uh, pause for a while, someone is calling me. Hey, Kak. Kak Ain. Salam. Saya tengah dulu lecture. Okay, jadi saya kembali. Thank you, bye. Hey, Okay, sorry. So, um, the steady state condition is one of the condition or assumptions that we have talked about previously. Okay, so why do you want to uh, make sure that it's a steady state condition? It's because you want to make sure that the uh, equilibrium constant, uh, not equilibrium constant, you want to make sure that the um, the temperature, for example, uh, is constant and pressure is also constant because if you change that one, then pretty much you change all the th thermodynamics properties. Okay. So at equilibrium, it will be easier because you know that the enzyme substrate complex are kind of like in equilibrium with one another. 
So we can say that the enzyme are saturated at this particular point. Okay. So um, as we go on, it might be a bit confusing uh, because uh, sometimes I say it's saturated, but sometimes I say um, it's not saturated. So this all depends on where we are talking about within this graph. Okay. So this graph has a few properties that we're going to look at. So one is V0. If the initial rate of velocity, another one is V max. If you have looked at, if you have looked through all the um, the recent notes, then you will see these two um, conditions uh, being mentioned multiple times. Okay, so for V V max is normally when you get when you have the saturated um, enzyme. However, to uh, understand the kinetics of an enzyme, you cannot, you you can't you can't simply look at uh, the scenario at equilibrium. Why? Uh, because um, at equilibrium, um, there's, there's no such thing as a real equilibrium in the sense that if you have this complex E plus S forming E and S in equilibrium, E and S will always produce a product. Okay, So that's why we just assume that uh, it's a steady state condition, even though in reality, uh, it's very difficult for you to achieve uh, a real equilibrium, especially for enzyme kinetics. Okay, uh, there's always a tendency for the uh, enzyme to produce a product, or vice versa. So, um, thus, in this uh, mechanism maintain equation, we one one of the assumptions that we are using the first one is steady state condition, whereby there's no change of thermodynamics. That is more important. Okay, no change in temperature. There's no change of uh, pressure. Um, and of course, enzyme is uh, uh, can be regenerated a hundred percent. Okay. So number two, the assumption is a catalytic process is a is the rate determining step. So what it means by that is that the initial binding, okay. So the ENS, the binding is very very fast, in the sense that uh, at at one uh, zero point zero zero second, if you put the enzyme in it will quickly form an ES. Of course, it's not, uh, in, in, in reality, it's not the case, um, but uh, not 0 0.001 second, probably like at one second, you always get uh, a saturated enzyme very, very quickly, okay? Therefore, while producing the product, is slower, okay? Even, even if you look at the um, uh, process by which um, uh, enzyme catalyzed reaction, uh, based on the models, okay, the the lock and key model, or uh, even uh, the the second model that we looked at, whereby there are movement, okay, in this fit model where are there are movement of the enzyme, um, engulfing, uh, so to say, engulfing the substrate before the substrate can, uh, before the reaction can actually take place, and thus producing the product. Okay, so the 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 um, how do I say the rate by which the substrate um, gets attached or reacted or, or um, be in contact with the enzyme are very, very fast. And therefore, the product formation is the rate determining step. Again, this is an assumption because we are not sure which one is which. Um, for all we know, some enzymes, uh, product formation is very, very quick while um, trying to get the substrate to be in a very um, uh, induced fit form is the slow ones. Okay, we don't know, but in mechanism maintain, this is an assumption whereby the first step is very fast, and the second step, the product formation is slower. Okay, and the third assumption is at t equals zero. Okay, uh, at the zero point zero zero one second, by which you just mix the substrate, uh, substrate and the enzyme, there was no or little product form. Okay, therefore we can say that P equals to zero. So again, if you were to write the equation, we have E plus S um, in equilibrium with E and S, and then forming, or also in equilibrium, E regenerating the enzymes and product. Okay, so what the third assumption says is that at T equals zero, at the very beginning of the reaction, you do not have this. Okay, therefore this E equals to that, therefore, um, K2 is uh, negligible. So K2 is over here. Okay, so we have K2, um, K1, and K minus 1. So what does the K means? K means just rate. So rate formation of ES is basically K1 times E times S. 
Why? Because rate is a constant number and ENS is the concentration of enzyme and substrate at the very, uh, at a particular time point. Okay, so K minus one, meaning that um, the rate is going to opposite direction. Similarly, K2 is the rate for the product formation for the ENS complex at this particular rate. So uh, forming E again and product. So how do we get the K1, K2 and, and by the way, this one is a small K, not big K. So big K is for equilibrium, small K is for rate. Okay, so how do you determine the K? So uh, scientists can do a lot of experimental um, equation to actually calculate the K number. So the K number is more on constant value. Uh, for one enzyme, normally you will get one K number. Okay, uh, one K1, one K minus one, K2 and so on and so forth. Okay, so this can be a very, very complex mathematical equation. Um, so for uh, this lecture, we're just gonna uh, do an assumption and we are not going to put in any values in the case. Okay, even though if I were to, to ask you in an um, exam, for example, if you have um, K um, rate of say 0, 0 0.01 um, mole per second, okay, and then you have uh, enzyme concentration of uh, say 1 molar and substrate concentration of say 10 molar. So can you calculate the formation of ENS, okay, so very, sim very simple because ENS is this one, this guy over here, okay, the formation of um, formation of the ES complex and because we are looking at um, the rate by which the ES form from the concentration of ENS, so simply what you do is you do just go 0 0.01 times 1 times 10, okay, so this is the uh, formation of ES complex. Basically, it's, it's just a representation. So today, we, uh, because there is no fixed value for K1, K minus one, it all depends on the enzyme. So we're just gonna do a variation. Okay. All right. So and because it says K K2 is negligible because there is no literal product. So meaning that the backward reaction over here is negligible or or close to zero because you don't have that. So because you don't have that, you cannot have your product. Um, reacting with your enzyme producing the ENS again. All right, and the fourth one, the fourth assumption is at T equals to zero. Okay, so T equals to zero, meaning at the very beginning of the reaction, substrate concentration is way higher than the enzyme concentration. So uh, example that I've put here is your enzyme is one molar, and your substrate is 10 molar. But in reality, if you are doing an enzyme kinetics, um, the rate might be 100 fold or even 1000 fold higher because otherwise the enzyme is, because um, uh, enzymes are expensive. So what you want is you want to use uh, as little as possible, but you want to get as much product as possible. So the enzyme concentration is normally in a micromolar scale. However, the substrate can be in a molar scale. So there's, there's a huge difference in terms of concentration. Therefore, at T equals to zero, when you are doing your, the, your kinetics, uh, enzyme kinetics reaction, you can consider that the uh, concentration of substrate is way higher than the concentration of enzyme. Therefore, your ES complex are almost zero, negligible. It's very, very close to zero. Therefore, to, um, to calculate your um, substrate concentration, uh, your total substrate concentration is also your substrate concentration at the very beginning of the reaction, which is S0, S0. Okay, so these are all four assumptions in mechanism maintain kinetics equation. And we're going to look at in very, um, like, uh, very brief on one by one and how you actually apply this and how do you actually get mechanism maintain reaction and why is it important? Okay, so that's the, I guess, the, the primary question. Why do you want to use this? Okay, so what does uh, Michaelis Mantin say? Uh, Michaelis Mantin proposed a model known as uh, MM Kinetics, um, Michaelis and Mantin Kinetics, MM, to account for enzymatic dynamic. Okay, so you want to see uh, dynamic in the sense that um, you are considering there is a product forming ENS, and at the same time, you are 
Um, so of course, everything is should be in bracket, which is concentration is a sign of concentration. So when you want to see the dynamics, meaning that you don't want to just see um, S and then you have enzyme here and then P. So this is a general uh, chemical um, reaction. So you have one, you have an enzyme, you, have, you form the product. Okay, so this is one. But in terms of dynamics, so dynamics here means that what are other factors that involve in the product formation? So it's not simply just substrate converting into product in the presence of enzyme, but there are also more um, detailed um, scenario that is happening uh, by which your substrate converting into a product. Okay, so they, they want to account for uh, as much changes as possible. So the model serves to explain how an enzyme can cause kinetic rate enhancement of a reaction. Okay, so kinetic rate enhancement and explain how um, reaction rates depend on concentration of enzyme and substrate. So um, what it also means here is, uh, so first, for the first bold sentence, enzyme is caused by kinetic rate enhancement of a reaction. So um, it's just to show that if you use an enzyme, then you can get a, a, a rate of a product formation. Okay, and why is this important again? Um, say for example, if you have an enzyme A, Okay, so um, in in the year 2000, you discover enzyme A that has a rate formation of, for example, 1000 uh, millimolar per second uh, forming a product at this particular rate. Okay, and in 2020, someone discovered enzyme B that does the same thing, which is converting the same substrate into the same product. So, um, and you want to see whether B is better than A or A is better than B. So in an industrial perspective, you want to see, you, you want to always maximize your profit and to maximize the profit is you want to maximize the rate of your product formation. So in this case, you want to compare. So how do you compare? One, one way for you to compare is to run an experiment. So uh, imagine if you are an industry, you have a very large scale um, um, product formation. So you you simply, it's, it's illogical for you to just simply do um, you know, uh, 1,000 liter of, of reaction using enzyme A and then 1,000 liter of reaction using enzyme B and then you compare the product that is formed, okay? So it's it's a waste of money. Therefore, you, want, you might want to use enzyme kinetics like this because based on the calculation, you can have a prediction whether A or B is better. So say, for example, if you have done the reaction and then you found out that uh, using mechanism maintain, um, the uh, kinetic rate for uh, enzyme B is 1,500 millimolar per second. And of course, this is by a smaller scale reaction. Therefore, you can imagine if you want to scale it out into industrial level, then substituting enzyme A to enzyme B is more beneficial. Okay, so this is just a, a rough idea. Of course, there are multiple other factors that you need to take into consideration. For example, the pH of the enzyme, the stability of the enzyme in your mixture, you, um, Perhaps there are other factors that you need to activate enzyme B. Okay, so there are, there are multiple factors. But in general, okay, if you ignore all the other factors, again, assumption, if you just look at the rate of uh, product formation from uh, enzyme A compared to enzyme B, then from these numbers, you can actually say uh, B is better. So let's switch to B. Okay, so this is one of the reasons why mechanical um, cemented equation is important um, in enzymatic. Uh, enzyme kinetics. Okay. On the second line, it says, uh, in the second bold line, it says, explain how uh, reaction rate depends on concentration of enzyme and substrate. Okay. Again, if you just uh, use a reaction like this, okay, so you know S form P's. So in basic principle, you have more S, you have also more P's. Uh, product, <laughs> not P's, P's. More product. But in reality, enzyme also uh, plays an important role. So um, this equation later on will explain if you have a certain concentration of enzyme, this is what you should expect. If you change, if you have a constant number of enzyme, but you change um, substrate, then this is what you should expect. And if you have uh, this much product, what you should expect, okay? So this is basically an expectation on a theoretical uh, values. Okay, so in an enzyme uh, catalyst reaction, uh, the plot of reaction versus substrate, 
uh, or V over uh, versus S can be drawn as this. Okay, so if you are to do get, um, if say, uh, of course, at a constant enzyme concentration. Okay, so if you keep on using, say, 0 0.1 uh, micromolar of enzyme concentration, and then you uh, vary the concentration of your substrate, you'll get a plot like this. Okay, so at one point, so because this is velocity, you will get V max. At one point, you will get a V max. And V max can probably, in this case, um, based on my drawing, probably it starts somewhere around here. Okay, so this, everything else is a V max. So V max, what does it mean? It means that it's a velocity max uh, at which, even if you increase the number of concentration, the product formation is still a constant. Okay, so meaning that there is a very saturated so if you again consider this equation, okay, at V max, somewhere around at, at the concentration of substrate at V max, um, enzyme are almost uh, zero, okay, because everything is always um, form uh, ES complex. Even though you you can say oh, but doctor, it's regenerating itself once it's form a product, but because the substrate concentration is very very high. So the probability of the substrate to again interact with this free enzyme is very, very high. Therefore, um, you will always get um, ES as the maximum. Okay, at Vmax, normally ES is also maximum. Now, um, so, uh, this one is so, if, if you just consider uh, Vmax, okay, um, why, why is it important uh, and why, sorry, I'm looking for my notes. Um, okay, it doesn't save. Uh, hopefully it's, it's somewhere. Okay, so wh why is it important? Uh, why don't we just look at Vmax for all enzyme kinetics? Because again, if you want to uh, calculate the rate, okay, again, uh, when uh, in the previous uh, slide, I mentioned about rate of A, enzyme A and rate of enzyme B, correct? So uh, how do you get the rate? So if you're just consistently getting a Vmax, you, it's very difficult for you to determine the rate because rate by definition is change. Okay, by definition is change. Uh, you, you can substitute with a delta sign, but at Vmax, the rate change is zero. So there's no change. So how do you actually get this value? How do you, how can you get the, the rate value? So to get the rate value, you, instead of looking at the Vmax, you need to look at the initial condition, which is, we can consider as V naught. Okay, the, the rate of reaction at the very beginning of the reaction. So V naught. Uh, by knowing V naught, you can actually uh, be confidently say that this is the rate of the reaction, this is the speed uh, of which your enzyme is producing your product, okay, compared to Vmax. So Vmax, the rate is zero, while uh, V0, the rate is maximum. And this is the value that you want to use um, in order for you to say an enzyme is faster than a second enzyme. All right. So how do you actually, oops, how do you actually determine that? How do you actually look at that? So um, as an industry, what you are interested in is always looking at the rate of product formation. Okay, so this is what you are, this is the ultimate goal. So the ultimate goal is for you to look at the rate of product formation. So rate of product formation, uh, I just put it like K, but if you were to put a number over here as previously, so that one is K2, that one is K minus 2. So the rate of product formation in this particular equation here, therefore, is K2 times um, E and S. Okay. So you want to um, know the rate formation of a product. Uh, K is the rate constant and P is the concentration of product. So you want to know how fast is the product being formed. So in a steady state condition, the rates can therefore be if you are to look for the rates of um, 
say because over here we have entity of enzyme you have substrate you have a uh, substrate enzyme complex and also products okay so you can actually uh, calculate or determine at, at least in mathematical formulation or what is shown here the change of enzyme concentration so i'm, I'm going to do just one by one this is just an example okay so to um, understand how you can actually see the change of enzyme so change is actually very easy to understand you are looking at formation minus um, either elimination or destruction and stuff like that okay so basically um, I will just say elimination okay so this is how you see the rate so for if you are if you are to look for the rate of change of enzyme okay so in mathematical if you remember again um, uh, we have a uh, rate of change over time so delta e uh, change of enzyme over dt over time so meaning over here change of enzyme over time is equals to k minus one uh, plus k2 times ens so what does it mean this is the formation okay um, to try and understand this a little bit if you look at k minus one over here okay so you want to look at this how do you know the formation of e so to know the formation of e is basically you need to times the rate constant times the concentration of uh, es then you can get e okay similarly you get k2 which is over there because what you're doing you are looking at the formation of enzyme so enzyme you can only form uh, enzyme um, via two pathway the first pathway is the enzyme substrate complex dissociate forming e and s again or um, you can regenerate the enzyme after you produce the product okay so that's why the first um, rate of change of enzyme if you look at that is a formation however you need to minus by the elimination okay and this one is using the e1 because now if the reaction goes into that direction to the right direction you'll get a reduction in the concentration of enzyme therefore you put it there k1 times ens because uh, ens uh, will form the es complex will also what it also means is that it will consume uh, ens and at the same time uh, because this one is in a bracket you are looking at the uh, production of es complex or k2 times concentration of enzyme times the concentration of product um, and if you have the values for k1 k2 es uh, individual e and s and p you can calculate the actual rate of change over time okay so similarly you can do the same thing um, you can get the change of substrate uh, with the same concept over here is the formation that one is elimination and you can also get uh, rate of change of ens complex and finally what you are interested in is change of product over time and therefore you can get based on the same principle you can get k2 e times s so again formation and um, k minus 2 e times p which is the elimination okay and this serve as the first um, equation why is it first because this is what we are interested in okay so we are interested in that so everything else yes you might want to know about it but uh, industrial perspective what you want is you want to see this product okay rate of change to product not not that one that one is the concentration of product yes you want you want that as well but what you want is the rate of product formation uh, because if you change it into a different enzyme um, and the rate of product formation is increasing then that's what you want okay all right so however at equilibrium so if you consider at equilibrium um uh, v equals to zero okay so there is no net reaction so if you consider everything is in equilibrium okay um 
Okay, so if you consider everything is in equilibrium, sorry, it's a bit slower because I'm looking at, I want to see what you guys are looking at too. Okay, so um, zero net reaction because the product is always formed, substrate is always formed. Thus, we can study the rate reaction at T equals to zero. Okay, so um, at this point, there is a very little product form. Therefore, K2, so this is uh, one of the assumption. Okay, so you, you normally want to see at T equals zero instead of um, after you get a Vmax. So T equals zero, which is also V uh, equals to zero. At the very beginning of the reaction, T is at zero is at the very beginning. So V naught, T naught are all talking about beginning of the reaction. However, T infinity or uh, V max is at the um, above substrate, enzyme substrate saturation. Okay. So at this point, if you consider um, uh, T equals to zero, at the very, very beginning of the reaction, again, that's the reaction rate. V naught is somewhere here. Okay, at the very beginning of the reaction, if you consider that as t equals to zero, so we assume that there is no product formation. Okay, if there is no product formation, uh, or you can say k minus two is negligible, so you still say at t equals zero, this one forms very very quickly. But this one is the rate determining step again, rate determining step. So if there is no that one, or Therefore, k minus 2 is also negligible. Okay, so this is what the sentence means. k minus 2 is negligible. Again, it's an assumption. Okay, therefore, you can change the first reaction uh, over here. Okay, by which you are considering the formation and elimination. So now, because at the very beginning, v minus uh, v naught equals to 0, k2 is negligible. Therefore, the reaction can be simplified to be just k2 times e s concentration. Okay, because you don't have that. Therefore, there is no uh, arrow going backwards. Now, you only have one direction, one direction um, equation. Therefore, K2 times ES. Okay, assuming a steady state condition still applies. Of course, we always consider steady state condition, uh, almost always. Therefore, change of ES. Now, we are looking at the second equation, ES over DT. Um, again, because it has a K minus 2 expression. It's no longer there because K2 again is negligible at T equals to zero, okay, or V naught. And therefore, you can get an equation like this, okay. If you rearrange it, you'll get um, concentration of E times concentration of S over concentration of E and S, you get equals to K minus one plus K2 over K1. And this is what we call as Michaelis Menten. Uh, Michaelis constant, okay? So, Michaelis constant is constant for a specific enzyme. So, one enzyme will have one um, Michaelis constant, okay? And how do you actually use this? We're going to use it in the next slide. Okay, so, um, again, if you look at that, uh, rate of change in P uh, or V0 at V0, equals to K2 times ES minus K minus 2 uh, EMP from equation number one. And when you rearrange this, okay, uh, you can now rearrange this at T equals to zero. You, you will not have that one, of course. Okay. And then because you have this rate, you can also have, can get this particular rate from uh, change of ES. Okay, again, if you uh, forget, you have this multiple equation over here. So the first one, we are using this, number one. And then if you put number one into um, rearrange it, rearrange uh, this one over here. So the change of ES, which is also this one over here. So the very beginning, this is the, the equation. So we have four of this equation. We're going to use all four of them to actually derive michaelis menten equation. Okay, again, as I mentioned, you do not need to, uh, I will not ask the question by which you need to derive the equation, but you need to understand how the equation is being derived or 
why it's being derived. Okay, and when you rearrange um, the rate of change of ES, so this one from um, delta ES over dt, okay, you rearrange it, you get that one, right? And then you, which is also KM. So when you rearrange it, you can get concentration of ES equals to simply E times S over KM because KM comes from here. Okay, if you take out all the rate values, you can abbreviate it as Michaelis constant. And you can simply, if you have, if you do have the values, you can calculate ES um, concentration at any particular, at the uh, T equals to zero by knowing the initial concentration of enzyme, initial concentration of substrate, and knowing the Michaelis, maintain, uh, Michaelis constant. Okay, so from here you can get that. And of course, if the uh, question asks you the ES, concentration at t equals zero is say um, seven seven molar um, what is the enzyme concentration um, initially given um, the km value is say one for example so you can use this, this equation you can go and, and rearrange the equation so that you can get the e value okay so uh, you need to understand how to utilize this, but you, you do not need to remember what are the steps one by one to actually derive the equation. All right, since at the beginning of the reaction, again, t equals to zero, as uh, I mentioned initially, substrate concentration is way higher than enzyme. Okay, if you were to uh, consider, if you want to uh, consider the substrate concentration, right? So um, substrate concentration, is always equals to um, or as total. So total of substrate concentration is equals to um, substrate concentration that is free. Free meaning it is not bound to um, enzyme plus the substrate concentration bound to enzyme. Okay. So at any given time, you can actually calculate or, or know the substrate concentration, a total substrate concentration in your reaction vessel by using this equation, S3 times um, ES complex, okay? But because the enzyme concentration is way, way, way lower than the substrate concentration, what you can consider is you can do approximation that S total just equals to S3. And therefore, you can say that at T equals to zero, um, you can get 100% of S0, which is the initial uh, substrate concentration. At the same time, E total, on the other hand, is equals to E plus E and S, uh, similarly as how we described up here. Um, and therefore, uh, but in this case, you do not approximate um, because S is so much, then uh, enzyme becomes zero. No, because now the values are very, very low. Thus, everything stays. Okay, So E total equals to E free plus E S in complex. Okay, so that's that's how you calculate. And therefore, if you rearrange it, you can get E3 equals to E total minus E and S. Okay, so basically you just move it there. So at any given time, if you know the um, enzyme total concentration, you can uh, and the enzyme uh, initial. So E total is the initial enzyme concentration that you use. And then if you know the enzyme concentration free enzyme concentration at any given time, then you know that how much of the enzyme actually bonded to um, substrate. Okay, so this is what the equation says. But it's not only that, if you consider three, um, number equation number two and number three, and then you put two into number three, so meaning that you put E equals to E total minus ES into here, substituting this guy over here, okay? what you can get is ES uh, concentration equals to E total minus E and S times substrate divided by um, Michaelis constant. And then if you solve it, you can get this, okay? Um, so you can get ES equals to E total times S divided by KM times S. So how do I get that? Well, it's mathematical formulation. If you have a minus over there and then a times, so you need two times there and times there. 
and then you need to rearrange blah 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 sort solve it so that's why i say solve so you'll get this um equation okay so when you have this equation so this one is what i call as solve number two see you put it on number one up there so you'll get because why do you want number one again number one is the rate pro product formation okay so i just kind of like remind you again and again because there's so many equation um so ultimately what do you want to see you want to see rate of product formation so you put it uh, up there at v equals to zero um at the initial uh, rate of reaction or uh, t equals zero again t equals zero doesn't mean that it's at zero second t equals zero meaning it's a beginning of reaction okay so at uh, v naught therefore equals to k2 again going forward k2 times um e total so this is the enzyme uh, total that you use initially so this one is also we can consider e naught uh, times substrate concentration um, divided by um, the michaelis constant plus substrate concentration okay so this one is number four so then yet so this is not the michaelis maintain equation so what you do now have is we have this okay so we have the partial equation which is number four just now k2 so recall that reaction will eventually reach maximum velocity so again if you draw it like that so you also have v max over here okay when all active sites of the enzyme is occupied so uh, e total equals to e so initially we have e total equals to e plus e and s but at v max up here okay as i mentioned initially you do not have any free enzyme Okay, free enzyme concentration is almost zero because all enzymes are now saturated and thus becoming the ES complex. Okay, so therefore, um, if you consider Vmax, E total now equals to E S only. Okay, since E equals to zero. So E total equals to E S max or, or you can just simply do E S either is fine okay so it's the same concept um, therefore v max now you can substitute into this particular equation by which v max equals to k2 times es max okay or k2 times e total it's the same thing okay again now we are looking at v max we are not looking at v not anymore we are looking at v max so e total can be rearranged uh, to equals v max over k2 so k2 again is the rate of uh, product formation so if you substitute now um equation number five into reaction number four four which is which is this one because now what you are interested in is if now you have the e total um representative so you're gonna substitute it over here so what you will get is you will get this one v naught equals to v max times substrate over uh, michaelis constant plus s concentration okay so now you can suddenly see the relationship between v naught and v max so initially if you just look at the the equation one by one um if you are if your reaction reaches v max um if your enzyme reaction re achieve v max very very quickly it's very hard for you to uh, determine what is the initial rate of reaction because again this is very important for you to know because this value determines how fast your enzyme is producing the product okay so initially if you're just looking at that at any particular time you you know that you are producing a lot of products because you know that the v already is a maximum but um you it's hard for you to do a comparison if you want to do a comparison uh, you you cannot know that without knowing v naught so by doing everything that we've done uh, in the past few um, slides what you now have is you now have the rate of product formation over time okay which is v naught equals to v max so now you have a relationship between v naught and v max and this is what michaelis maintain equation says and based on this equation you can see 
that um, the enzyme concentration is not really important suddenly, right? So the, the enzyme concentration is not really important. What important, uh, more important is for you to know what is the Vmax substrate and whatnot. But again, by using this equation, you can go back and calculate everything else. Okay, it doesn't mean that once you have one value, you can ignore the rest, no. Um, you can play around with the equation depending on the data or the information that was given. You can actually calculate the um, the, the correct value for any particular um, objects, okay? So now if you look at the reaction velocity again, whereby we have a Vmax over here and we have V0 somewhere here, okay? Now you can actually calculate half of Vmax or, or you can know the value of half of Vmax by just knowing the Km value. So these are all the relationship between between um, this simple reaction. Okay, based on the simple reaction, if you have any of this value, either you have this and this um, and this, you can calculate, um, you can calculate the uh, constant, for example, but if you have the constant value, now you can calculate the other way around. Okay, so now you can get Km and then from Km you can calculate everything else. Okay, so in summary, mechanical symmetric equation can tell you uh, the concentration of substrate which permits the enzyme to achieve half of Vmax. Okay, and therefore you can optimize the use of enzyme. So again, why is it important? Because for an industry, what you want is you don't want to achieve Vmax. If you achieve Vmax, meaning that you are, uh, yes, in one way, if you think about it, uh, is it wouldn't you want to achieve Vmax, right? So that's what uh, some uh, people might say. But in reality, for um, an enzyme kinetics for an industry, you if you achieve Vmax, what it also means is that you are um, uh, kind of like putting a barrier on the product formation. Once you have a Vmax, you will not get extra uh, products so that's the maximum that you can get so in case if something happened then you will lose every everything but uh, what you want also is to know the value of half of vmax um, why because if you know half of vmax you know the um, you your reaction have not achieved the maximum uh, product formation Therefore, what you can do, if you, if I were just to um, write the equation again, okay. So what you can do is you can control. So, um, so this is the or original graph, okay. So what if you know that at this particular um, Km value or at this particular substrate concentration, you already get half of the product. So what you do is say, for example, um, initially you have 10 number of substrate, uh, substrate concentration is, oops, substrate initial concentration is 10. And then um, what you want is, you so you have that as 10, okay? But you don't want to achieve that Vmax because if you have achieved the Vmax, um, say for example, just an example, okay? Vmax is about, 20, okay? So um, initial, you have 10, but you know Vmax is 20. If you put 30, so what you will have is you will you will be lacking uh, or you, you are actually adding 10 extra substrate concentration that does nothing to your system. So your system now is not optimized. If the system is not optimized, therefore you cannot say that you get the maximum product um, at the balance of costing and so on and so forth. So for industrial application, you want it to be as optimum as possible and to get an optimal um, reaction as possible, you are normally looking at half of the maximum reaction. Okay, and why you want to get half of a maximum reaction? Because if you, if you can control your reaction to be around here always, you can always um, extract out your product at any given time, or you can always add in more substrate at any given time. Okay, so that's that's one way to look at it. Um, in industrial perspective, you want to maximize your yield. Therefore, you want to consider these variables. 
and if you say always stay over there okay for example um, yes you you do get your maximum product but again if you are here for example you can still get the maximum number of product and and at the same time if anything happened to your to your um, industry or, or your catalytic reaction you will not lose much okay so if you keep on um, using uh, the highest substrate concentration as possible then if something went wrong you are in a higher range of uh, loss okay so uh, industrial perspective you don't want to get um, you don't want to loss as much as possible or you want to minimize your loss at the same time you want to maximize um, number of product formation okay so that's one way for you to use uh, enzyme kinetics um, and that's one of the importance of enzyme kinetics okay again this is just the assumption that um, i mentioned at the beginning of the reaction so um, it's a bit confusing uh, perhaps because when i first learned about this it, it was very confusing because there's so many reactions and um, uh, especially because i cannot give you guys any um, questions uh, to show you during the lecture so it will be a bit confusing but what we'll do um, in the next monday we're gonna have your quiz so on the week eight or week next seven week eight we will look at um some uh, we will discuss on on the quiz that you have you guys have done and perhaps we will go into the lecture a little bit um but suffice to say that there will probably be one or two questions about enzyme kinetics uh, for your next coming quiz uh, i will try my best to create some questions and pass it to you guys so that you can actually see what might be asked okay um, again in, it's not everything that can be asked it what might be asked because there's even though there's only four equation initially but you can derive a lot of equation and you need to understand a lot of the equation to be able to uh, utilize Michaelis maintain equation to the maximum okay that's all for me for today um thank you and i will post this lecture uh, recorded lecture on spectrum soon thank you take care have a good break thank you doctor thank you doctor thank you doctor